Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Dr. Stephanie West, and today we are going to be discussing what the science of reading looks like in an everyday classroom. Across the education circles, we are hearing the phrase science of reading. We are learning that the science of reading is current research that incorporates research across disciplines, including developmental psychology, cognitive neuroscience, cognitive science, along with educational psychology. This research has become a global movement and is seen in all cultures and languages. The science of reading is not only a movement, but demonstrates best practices and methods to help children learn to read. Starting in the earliest steps of language to the successful steps of decoding unfamiliar words. As we learn more and more about the science of reading, we need to move from research to implementation. Which brings us to the big question. What does the science of reading look like in an actual classroom? The research into science of reading has identified the following five components that are key to reading success. Phonemic awareness, phonics, vocabulary, comprehension, and fluency. So let's take a look at implementing these five components of reading. Historically, reading instruction was a step-by-step -step process along with incidental teaching moments or the aha moments. When implementing the science of reading instruction, we need to be more intentional and systematic. We need to focus our instruction on dedicated blocks of literacy, blocks of time, where phonics is taught clearly and sequential from identifiable curriculum. We need to stop teaching comprehension skills through leveled reading groups, where small groups of students visit the teacher for round-robin reading practices. Instead, we should be using rich, complex texts for all students in the class. During these types of reading blocks, we should provide multiple reads of the same text, beginning with the teacher modeling and then moving to student practice. We need to be including small group and partner reading strategies for repeated readings, to develop student fluency. As educators, we need to be hearing student voices along with student teacher, high quality conversations about rich, complex text that focuses on language, structure, and deepening comprehension. So let's take a deeper dive into each of the five components of the science of reading. We're gonna start with building phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness is the idea that the phoneme sounds correspond to the graphemes, letter sequences that signify sounds. The goal of phonemic awareness, usually accomplished in grades kindergarten through first, is to teach students the skills needed for them to independently start to decode unfamiliar words using the skills they have developed through the application of phonics instruction. The following activities can be easily implemented into your phonic awareness instruction. So guess the word. Lay out a few items or pictures in front of the students. Let the students know you will be using slow motion talk, meaning you will be announcing the names of the items in a funny voice. For example, if there's a picture of a cat, drag out the k, a, s, sounds as long as you can. Their goal is to guess the name of the item or picture before you have finished saying the word. Mystery bag. Using plastic letter magnets and paper bags, place three letters that can be used to make easy to sound out words. For example, pat or cat. Have the students pull one letter out of the bag at a time, asking them to sound out each letter. For younger children, the teacher will give them the sound and the child will copy. Then have the students put the letters together to make words. So I spy with words. The teacher, the teacher says, I spy with my little eye something that starts with an ah sound. 
and then wait for your students to shout out something that they see that begins with that sound. Rhyme matching game. Print out pictures for common items that rhyme. For example, car, star, chair, bear, rat, mat, and so on. The students then try and match the pictures to make rhyming pairs. Okay, there are three elements of science-based phonics instruction. Based on the research, there are three key elements needed for effective phonics instruction. A hands-on approach, moving from presentation to practice, showing the direct application to reading and spelling. Here are a few activities that use these key elements. Flip the pancake. Using brown construction paper, cut out eight to 10 circles and write the letters the class is working on. Grab a spatula and have the students take turns flipping over pancakes. Have the students say the letter in sounds written on the pancake. You can extend this activity and have the students make words out of the pancakes once they have all been flipped over. Play-Doh letters. Using Play-Doh, call out different letters of the alphabet and have the students construct the letters. For a visual aid, place a flashcard of the letter on the board. And then word roller. You will need a ball and, and alphabet flashcards. On the floor, have the students sit in a circle. Flip over the flashcard and then roll the ball to a student. That student will say a word that starts with the sound. They can roll the ball back to you or to another student who may have another word that starts with that same letter. Do this a few times before switching letters. Vocabulary development is next. Vocabulary is the foundation of language development, along with playing a critical role in reading comprehension. Vocabulary is essential to the improvement of not only reading skills, but co communication skills. Expanding students' vocabulary impacts their overall reading, writing, listening, and speaking skills. Here are some fun activities that can be included in any vocabulary instruction. Sketch notes. Rather than writing out definition, have the students draw a sketch that sums up each word. It's a lot more fun and gives students a visual which builds memory. A graffiti wall. Think of this as a collaborative word wall. Post the words that you're working on that week on the wall and have the student add their own words or illustrations to it. You can also make this smaller and you can use sticky notes to add to notes to, the, to illustrate the terms. These can be synonyms, antonyms, pictures, or even definitions. And then fill in the words from A to Z. Choose a word, then challenge students to come up with related words for as many letters in the alphabet as possible. These can be synonyms, antonyms, examples, and more. The next one is comprehension. Reading comprehension or finding meaning from what we read is the ultimate goal of reading. The process of comprehension is both interactive and strategic. Instead of passively reading text, students must analyze it, internalize it, and make it their own. To read with comprehension, developing readers need to read with some proficiency and then be explicitly instructed through comprehension strategies. The most important comprehension strategies that we teach extensively in most teaching preparation programs are using prior knowledge and previewing, predicting, identifying the main idea, and summarizing, questioning, making inferences, and visualizing. Here are a few other strategies that can be used to strengthen any general strategies in any comprehension instruction. Story maps. Students learn best when it is visual, and a story map brings in the visual component into their reading instruction. Story maps raise student awareness of the elements the author uses to construct the story. These maps can include setting, the, the characters, the plot, and the theme. 
Retelling. Asking students to retell a story in their own word forces them to analyze the content and determine what the main idea is along with what is most important within the story. Teachers can also take this one step further by having the students draw their own conclusions or even change the ending of a story. And again, sketch notes. This is a favorite among most teachers. Have the students draw out the story, including as many details as possible within their notes. This will allow students to not only use their creativity, but to visualize the story. And our last one is building reading fluency. Reading fluency includes comprehension, speed, accuracy, and prosody, or reading with expression. Here are a few favorite fluency activities that you can use. Model fluency. Reading aloud to students is important for so many reasons, but one of the best is it teaches students what fluency sounds like and looks like. Teachers can model expression, phrasing, pace, and so much more when they read to their students. Put together poems and nursery rhymes. Students often memorize nursery rhymes long before they learn to read. Take a nursery rhyme and print out each word on a tile or paper square. Give small groups of students the squares and have them put the words in the correct order to be able to read the nursery rhyme correctly. By breaking these rhymes apart into individual words and putting them back together again, students are then able to see how words build sentences and stories in a natural flow. Line trackers or word pointers. For some students, focusing is a challenge. Their eyes wander around the page and they have trouble developing the speed needed for fluency. Use another piece of paper, preferably blue, which is a calming color to help them focus on the line they're reading or try pointing to the words one by one with these fun pointers. Thank you so much for, enjoy for joining me today and I hope you have enjoyed this time with me.